deal for us. I'll take you as far as I'm going. No trouble, no police. What's in it for you? When we get to Chicago, you let me go. If I catch a liar lying to me, I'm gonna discharge nobody from down the road. Freak for a brother or drunk for a dad. Maybe I can be better. You are better, Bobby. If I can teach a chimpanzee how to play the piano, then you can do whatever you want to do. Let's go, let's go! It's an ice skating animal trainer that takes a wild ride across America with a serial killer and his pet, ch pet chimp. And it's a true story. That's the premise of the new movie, He Went That Way, based on the real life story of Dave Pitts. Dave's son, Jonathan, is a well-known improv coach, director, and producer. He's doing his one-man show next weekend based on his father's harrowing adventure. It's called My Dad, His Chimp, and a Serial Killer. Jonathan. <laughs> Hi, guys. You're thinking to yourself, oh, this old trope again. Yeah. <laughs> when are they going to stop making was. this story? Right. <laughs> so give people the broad strokes of this, would you? Because it, it, it sounds like you're making it up. I know, right? All right. So the broad strokes is uh, uh, my dad was with Ice Capades from 1961 to 1972. And he skated with different chimps. Uh, they were all skated underneath the name Spanky. Mm -hmm. But they only the original oh. Spanky was Spanky off stage as well as on stage. Okay. So they were like the menudo of chimps. They had different okay. names <laughs> off stage. Yeah. Like the so in 1964, while my dad and Spanky were traveling in a van, outside of Las Vegas, they picked up a hitchhiker. And my dad picked up the hitchhiker because he was looked like a young college preppy kid. Right. Yeah. And that turned out to be Larry Rain. This is your dad and the chimp? Uh, yes, that's my dad oh and the chimp. Oh, my gosh. Wow. That's the skating chimp. That's the original Spanky. All right, so keep He's talking. He's wearing a tuxedo yeah. and skating. All I right. can't do that. So he picked up a guy that <laughs> so he thought was just a guy. Hitchhiker, so yeah. just stuck, and then after a day, he pulled a gun on him, and that was Larry Rains. And Larry Rains was in the middle of his murder spree. He had already killed three people, quite possibly killed a family of four outside of Las Vegas just before my dad picked him up, because that's what the FBI told my dad afterwards. And then for the next two days, they traveled across America together. And at one point, when it, my, he first pulled the gun on my dad, he made my dad get in the cage with Spanky and spend the night in the cage. Why didn't he kill your dad? That's always the great question. And the answer is, the next day he said he was planning on killing my dad. He even chose the place where he's going to uh, drown the van and have them drown. But he didn't, because he said he was worried about what would happen with the monkey. And how did they catch the guy. Well, uh, uh, my family had something to do with that as well because after my dad escaped the situation when he let Larry Rains off in South Haven, Michigan, uh, he drove back through Chicago to Evanston where my grandmother Lillian and my grandpa Roy lived and he grew up in Evanston and when he told my grandmother the story she said, let me talk to your uncle Milt. Milt Scanlon was the police chief of Morton Grove, Illinois and mm. he later ended up contacting the FBI. Wow. But in the and but after my dad dropped him off, Larry Raines killed another two people. It's wow. you know, the way everyone's reacting in this room, it goes from super funny and weird to yeah. Whoa, this is really, Awful. yes. And did you know this story I growing up? I mean, no, no. I didn't find out about it until I was 42 years old. You're kidding. When my dad's older brother, my uncle uh, Dick, his wife, aunt, my Aunt Pat passed, and my cousin Scott and Tracy found a Chicago Sun-Times article that was in my Aunt Pat's possession that was written in 1964 by a guy named Bob Ellison. And it was called The Night Beat. And he was writing it like he was a beatnik, <laughs> which was like such the wrong tone right. for the story. Right. And I read it, and that's the first time I read it. So, of course, I call my dad. He was retired in San Diego. And I'm like, tell me the real deal. Let's start talking about it. And he didn't talk about it for a long time because back then, that generation, the John yeah. Wayne generation. He didn't talk about it. Right? And um, mm. this serial killer, uh, what can you tell us? Did he have a brother who was yes. also a serial killer? His brother, yes. They are the only serial killing brothers that we're aware of. And by that meaning, in American history, separate of the Menendez brothers, because they worked yeah. together. Yes. Whereas Larry Raines and <laughs> Danny Raines worked separately. Larry Raines did his serial killing first at the age of 19. 
then he was in prison for life, and then later his brother Danny, his older brother, began his serial killing, and the last people that he killed were two women from Chicago. Did they, were they abused as children, or like, oh, what's, yes. what's, what's below the backstory on those two? Well, uh, uh, there's a lot there. Both their yeah. parents were alcoholics, their yeah. father was very physically abusive. Oh. Their father also had like a deformed, withered right arm, which, you know, who knows what, what that, sure. but he used to make his sons fight for money, oh. Oh, and the fight would continue until one of them bled. Oh. Oh. And so that, you know, a lot of psychologists, like when I was talking with the producers of this movie, they'd done a lot of background research as well, and the general theory is, for most people, is that Larry Raines was probably born a psychopath, but Danny Raines became one. Oh. Which sort of answers that age yeah, old question right. of nature versus nurture, meaning the answer is both. Yes. So in addition to your one man show that we'll talk about, this movie, how yes. did the movie come about? Starring uh, Jacob Ellery and Zachary Kinto. Uh, that came about because uh, about 10 years after he was put in prison, Larry Raines was interviewed by a guy named Conrad Hillsbury, who was related to the last person who was killed, because wow. the last person killed was a teacher, Conrad Hillbilly, Hill, not Hillbilly, sorry, uh, yeah. uh, that'd be a different author. Uh -huh. uh, Conrad Hillbilly wrote a book called Luke Karamazov, which was the life story of Larry Raines. Uh -huh. It was, at, but Larry Raines asked him to change everybody's name, and for some reason, he did. Oh. Now. Luke also changed his, Larry Raines changed his name in prison. Yeah. From Larry Raines to Monk Steppenwolf. So Jeez. clearly he'd been reading some books in prison. Yeah. 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 Wow. It's just, and so in your, you have this one man show, it's at the Lifeline Theater the 13th and 14th of January? Yes, it is. Wow. And you just tell this whole story? I to tell people? the whole story. Oh, it's like gosh. 50 minutes long. And, uh, wow. Uh, it's fascinating. It, and we know, didn't even anybody, scratch the surface. Right. If you read the Chicago uh, Sun Times article that came out on December 31st, you can get a really good primer to it. But I'm able to go into details yeah. with 50 minutes that. Yes. Right. The other forums have not been able to. Right. Unbelievable. Right. Well, but thanks it's an for being amazing. here, Jonathan. Thank you. Wow. You can see my dad, his chimp, and a serial killer this weekend at the Lifeline Theater on Greenwood Avenue. And you can follow him on all the socials. And the movie's in theaters now and also coming up on Amazon. Yep, coming up on Amazon on the 12th. Oh, it's something, Jonathan. Thank you. Thank you. Wow.